Today, I'm going to share with you my favorite strategy for problem solving. Just think about it. When we sit down to solve a problem, especially a hard one, a very difficult one, we tend to go to our mental world of logic, symmetries, definitions, theorems, trying to find a solution for this problem, right? But our brains have two ways of finding the solutions to this problem. It's two ways of thinking, actually. Divergent thinking and convergent thinking. When you understand how they work, how different they are, and how they cooperate with each other, I think this is really going to help you on studying any area of mathematics. But before actually defining each one of these ways of thinking, I want to bring you a beautiful illustration so that you can understand how they work. And this is actually the way many mathematical proofs are discovered. When we look at a final version of a proof, it looks like an elegant piece of work. None of it is messy. But if you ever have the chance to ask the mathematician how they came up with it, their story will probably contain a lot of messy notes and crazy ideas. These ideas usually come from leaps of speculation and beliefs in conjectures that turn out to be false. The point is that the initial steps in any proof is full of painful constructions, and basically a lot of mistakes are made. And then, after cleaning up all the mess, mathematicians come up with a clean proof. This kind of process is true not only for high-level research, but pretty much in any learning process. My personal favorite strategy when I'm trying to learn something new, especially in mathematics, is to look for the most random and different explanations out there. And only then I start to eliminate what doesn't make sense for me or what I consider a bad explanation so that I can formulate my own explanation for myself like I'm trying to teach myself. I hope you noticed a pattern here. First, this whole process is divergent so that we can collect data. And then we converge. We clean up the data that we collected. Divergent thinking is something broad. Think of an explosion of possibilities to solve a problem. When you're thinking divergently, you need to eliminate all the filters in your brain so that you can explore the craziest ideas possible. That's what many people call brainstorming. When mathematicians and physicists are at this stage, they might ask, what if the symmetry group were extended? Can I perturb this structure? What if I reframe this problem geometrically instead of algebraically? What happens if I drop continuity? At this stage, you're not trying to be right or precise. You're trying to explore new routes. And you want to see many different interpretations and many different ways to look at the same object through different lenses. If you guys are enjoying this video, please do not forget to like it and to subscribe to the channel. After that, you need to go in the direction of convergent thinking. It's when you need to reduce and eliminate all of those unfruitful ideas from the brainstorming phase. Here, you need to start defining terms precisely, and probably you have to use well-established theorems. Now you have to check boundary conditions, eliminate contradictions, and turn your broad set of options into a single path that will allow you to move forward and solve the problem. So essentially, convergent thinking is about eliminating what doesn't matter or what you can remove and just keeping what is essential. Let's see a practical example so that you can understand what I'm talking about here. Say you want to find all possible integer solutions to the equation x squared minus y squared equals 84. At the very beginning, we activate our divergent thinking brain. We think, well, the first thing I notice here is that this is a difference of squares. How will it help me to solve the problem? I have no idea yet. I'm just spitting out ideas. Then we might switch to convergent thinking. I can formalize what I just found by naming a as x minus y and b as x plus y, which implies that 84 is a times b. So I guess the problem can be reframed as looking for all possible integer factorizations of 84. Switch back to divergent thinking for more creative ideas. Mm, let me take a look at what I found and try to draw some insights from it. Actually, it is kind of useless to study all these options for A and B, since what I truly want is a value for the pair x, y. So why don't we write x and y in terms of A and B instead? Maybe something will come out of it, or maybe not, but let me try anyway. The convergent thinking brain needs to use its precision in order to apply the correct inverse transformation. Back to divergent. What can I learn from looking at these two expressions? I noticed that for x and y to be integers, 
A and B must be either both even or both odd. As a counterexample, if A equals 2, even, and B equals 3, odd, then X would not be an integer. Once I know that either A and B are both even or both odd, I can eliminate many options. These are the only surviving pairs. And now, I can substitute these values of A and B back into the expressions of X and Y in order to find 22, 20, and 10, 4 as the only positive integer solutions to the equation. If you appreciate our work and you want to support what we're trying to build here on YouTube, consider becoming a member of the channel. Thanks for that. In mathematical education, but this is especially true in modern schools, teachers tend to overemphasize convergent thinking. So the students are trained to look for the right answer, to use formulas. They need to memorize formulas and eliminate bad ideas early on. But this approach discourages exploration and creativity. And as a consequence, people end up having a shallow understanding of the subject. True mathematical insight comes when you have a bad idea and you follow it far enough so that you can understand exactly why it doesn't work. And when you do so, when you fail over and over again and you understand why you are failing, you learn way more than just applying a set of techniques that somebody told you to use. You don't know why it works, but you just apply it blindly so that you can solve the problem. You need to always question whether this is the best approach or not. That's the best way to improve your problem-solving skills. Now, if you want to learn how to build mathematical intuition, check out this video in the channel. See you guys there.